Okay, so Stanley Pickett and his family, very close knit family, one of those families that haven't really experienced much of the world. They've lived in the same town all their lives. They still all live together, even though they, their children, their three children, are grown up, you know, in their 20s. But Stanley Pickett's family are a good family. They may not have ventured far and wide, but they know the world, they know how it works. And they run a very successful small town, small time little business called Pickett's Pest Service. So it's a pest control service um, that's been doing well. But the last few months, unfortunately for them, they've had some of the worst customers you could imagine. Clients that have been obnoxious, rude. And over time, this has worn thin on the family and made them realise that the pests that they face every day, these insects, these rodents, maybe aren't the real pests that should be exterminated which slowly ticks in Stanley's mind and makes him realise that he's targeting the wrong vermin. So Stanley and his family discuss at home, as you would at Sunday dinner, what they could do to eradicate the biggest pest on earth. Homo sapiens. Yep, humans. Stanley is like a wizard when it comes to concoctions to kill things off. He's done it all his life. So imagining him to be something a little bit like Breaking Bad and the main star there, um, Stanley knows exactly what to do when it comes to making the best bioweapon that's going to destroy people, but not animals. So they go on in their small time world. And meanwhile, when he's got a bit of spare time, he's creating this bioweapon. One day, they decide they're going to give it a go. So, a few of them travel, a few of them stay put in the UK, and they release, slowly but surely, in the right way, this bioweapon that's timed perfectly to affect all humans living in society and civilization at the same time. They go to bed one night, put their gas masks on so they can breathe safely, and they pop a load of sleeping pills because they don't want to be around to see the consequences with their own eyes, still not realising that actually what they're going to do might work. They're not thinking about the real magnitude of what they're about to do. So they go to sleep, fast asleep, gas mask on their face, wake up two and a half days later. There's no TV transmitting on any channels. There's no radio stations. There's no life. They wake up to rotting corpses. Their flipping plan was so successful of such massive magnitude that there are no living humans left in civilization other than themselves. All they really wanted to do was control the human population because they realized what threat we were to the planet and how most people aren't that nice some of the time. But now they've created this situation where there's one family left that they know of and they can't even repopulate humanity because they don't really want to create an inbred race of human freaks. So they come up with a harebrained idea that their bioweapon may only have worked on people living in civilization. So maybe, just maybe, there's a chance that people living lives in the wild, still living that kind of lifestyle that a few tribes do could just about mean that there are endemic people left alive and those people are the ones that they need to help their family repopulate earth in a measured way. So they set out on an adventure. They try and find others like themselves, other humans, maybe wearing less clothes and chasing animals around in jungles, but they st set out to find any humans they can so that their children, their, their siblings, can repopulate the earth. Obviously, there'll be no pilots. There'll be nobody that can sail a, a massive yacht or a ship across the sea, so they're going to really struggle now to cover all corners of the globe. So their adventure is going to be a flipping interesting one. Let's see what happens. The show is called Pests. Thank you very much.